Today we are in Houston, Texas at the Champions Poker Club battling against some of the toughest high stakes regs, Wolfgang, Alex, Trick Time, Milkman. How will we fare in this tough lineup? Enjoy the show. And in the eighth seat, another YouTube sensation, Slick Rick from Frisco, Texas. Professional player and content creator. Uh, finished fifth in the Poker Atlas Tour, and he just won uh, his first circuit ring in the Gargantuan two weeks ago. All right, on the first hand, we are thrown right into the action, and we are just given a little taste, a little teaser of what today is going to be like when we look down at ace jack suited in plus two there is a 50 dollars straddle it's a 10 quarter game but the 50 dollars straddle is going to be basically on the whole night so it's going to be playing pretty big anyways back into the action we look down at ace jack suited open it up and milkman calls trick time calls wolfgang calls so we are going four ways to the flop of nine nine three two hearts i think this is a board that i should be checking probably my entire range on uh, we don't really have a lot of 9x in our range, so probably checking out a position is the best way to go here. Uh, despite that, I bet out $125, which I don't mind, but again, I think checking is just better. Milkman, just sensing immediate weakness, raises things up to $300. I make a quick call with my two overs, and yeah, the turn is the six of spades, and he will continue on pretty strong here. Um, I believe he bets out $800. And yeah, a little bit of a tough spot. I think that uh, yeah, I, I think given the dynamic, given the player profile that I've you know I've watched uh, Milkman for a while now, I, I know that he can get after it. He's a great aggressive player. So I think once we call down on flop, we should be able to or be prepared to call down three streets. But this is the first hand. I'm a little nervous. You know, I don't want to get stacked with ace high on my first hand. So I decide to take a little bit more of a passive route and have the, you know, and let this have this one. So, yeah, a little bit of an interesting hand to start off. But again, I think, you know, at times uh, you got to be ready to call down three streets here, um, in which case we did not. But anyways, let's go on. Let's move on to the next hand. All right, guys, not much going on until hand number 14, where we look down at ace-jack offsuit in the small blind. Now there is a $100 straddle, so we're playing 10 quarter, 50, 100. We raise things up to $300, and Milkman gets after it one more time. Three bets us to $800, and it folds around back to us, and we look down at ace-jack offsuit, obviously. So uh, a couple things here. I don't think folding here was an option for me especially against a very good loose aggressive player so it was mostly between a call and a four bet and you know given being out of position i didn't really mind the four bet option possibly ripping this at some frequency i think both ranges are wide and i think h jack can play pretty well here um, but i decided to call and try to keep everything in his range try to keep going and yeah go to the streets and flop is pretty good it's jack nine five two spades we check it over he bets up six hundred dollars and yeah an interesting decision here because we only have around 3.5k 3.6k behind and i think calling here again is okay but given the boards given the dynamic i think ripping here also works a lot i think we do have a lot of semi bluffs that we can rip this in with queen 10 a lot of spades six seven seven eight you know all those holdings, a lot of jack eggs, so some two pairs, some sets. I think we just need to, given given how shallow we are, I think it would play very, very differently if we were a little deeper, but because of the dynamic, we just decide to rip this in, and he snaps us, he snaps us off, and when he snaps us off, I thought we were honestly kind of dead. Um, I thought that we were up against queens, kings, and aces, and he just had it here, but up against one of the best hands that we could have seen uh, we don't show it so i'm not really sure what i'm up against um, and i don't know what he has but it seems like on the turn he picked up actually a lot of outs with that six of spades so he picks up equity but we hold so we get a full double up on hand number 14 and just like that we win about a 9k pot and yeah it's amazing to always just start a session like this with a double up just kind of gets the pressure off your shoulders and lets you to play so really really good hand really happy kind of how i play this spot 
happy with the analysis so let's keep this going let's go all right not much going on for a little while a couple of small pots medium pots until the next hand where amir opens up 10 8 suited in plus two position uh there's a 50 dollar straddle he raises to 150 dollars and we look down at jack 10 suited in the button i you know when there are a lot of spots like this when it's between a mix or a call um i usually right now like to take more of the aggressive route especially on stream um, and especially in lineups where i can get four bet a lot or just squeezed a lot by better players and just rather take more of the aggressive route so we three bet to six hundred dollars i don't mind the sizing i think we can go um, just a little bit smaller just given how um, shallow amir is um, to a sizing like 450 or 500 but i think it works just as fine uh, we see i think a decent board a7 8 amir does have a lot of suited aces as well but this is a board that we will probably continue uh, most of our range and so we bet just small 400 dollars amir makes a quick call and yeah a, 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 pre, a pretty good board um and we're gonna go to the turn which is the ace of spades not loving the spot um probably one of the worst cards um for our specific holding because i think a lot of other turns um will give us a lot more equity for us to barrel represent that ace but uh, given this board pairing ace i think we want to check a lot we have hands like kings queens jacks tens that all want to check here probably a lot of ace x will also check here at, at a decent frequency just because of our yeah just to kind of balance the checking range and um set a little bit of a trap so we decide to just check this one and the river doesn't really help us it's the deuce of clubs and now amir bets out and yeah we make obviously a quick fold here not much to do it's actually i think a decent candidate to bluff i would rather probably bluff with a hand i don't i don't know i think it it, it is actually a decent candidate to bluff just because um it is pretty far down our range but not sure about this spot but anyways just a quick fold and move on let's keep moving along and next hand tie on the button opens to 200 dollars off of a 50 dollars straddle and we look down at ace 10 of clubs in the small blind we don't really have a lot of calls in this position given also the straddles and the and the big blind behind so we three bet 4x to 800 dollars and tie thinks about it for a little while and make the call uh the flop is 10 7 3 2 diamonds and i actually in game decide to check this one i don't really like it i think that 10 7 3 is actually a pretty good board for us we have a lot of two overs we have jacks queens kings aces and a lot of good diamonds etc so i think this is just a board that we want to continue with here a lot and obviously with top top this is a great board and i think for sizing i want to go kind of big here like thousand thousand two hundred dollars but in game i decide to check this one i'm not sure why and ty checks it back the turn is the queen of clubs i'm not sure if i want to bet here again but in game i decide to check this one kind of set the trap um kind of misplaying i don't know misrepresenting my hand a little bit maybe hands like eights nines sixes even i don't know some ace highs would would play like this so we check it over and now tie bets out six hundred fifty dollars and again i think this is okay to call but i think a check raise here is honestly better i think given especially the the board and especially given our range i think we also have a lot of bluffs here so i think ace 10 clubs can be a great you know great hand to just kind of put in the mergey value bluff kind of candidate so I think it's a great check raise candidate but again i decide to check this one and the river is the river's the eight of clubs and i check it over we have the nuts and tie checks again so i don't know not really loving how i play this spot i think i could have played it a much better i think we could have got a lot more value out of this hand just playing it the right way maybe even just bet 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 just make it simple but yeah a lot of spots where i could have taken a more of the aggressive route but this time i went a little bit passive and i think we missed out on a little bit of value here but good to continue to pick up pots we are yeah we're hitting pots in three bet pots which is you know i can't ever complain so let's keep it going okay next hand is an interesting one we are up against wolfgang the biggest poker youtuber 
right now. We raise up to $150 and Wolfgang in the big blind three bucks us to $725. And with our king queen of clubs, there is a four bet here at some frequency, but I decide to obviously, you know, just just call in position. I don't think can ever hurt when, with king queen of clubs. So we make the call go in position to a pretty good flop queen seven six two spades and Wolfgang continues out here pretty small for five hundred fifty dollars and obviously with our top pair king queen of clubs we are just not going anywhere pretty good spot for us so we're gonna make the call and go to the turn which is the deuce of hearts pretty much a brick not really anything changing so i am feeling pretty comfortable in this spot but wolfgang bets out thousand eighteen hundred dollars obviously this is not a spot that i on uh, you know i genuinely love because i mean all the value ace queen kings aces we're kind of dead against but with our king queen and clubs blocking kings etc just unblocking all the ace of spades ace of hearts we are just never ever going anywhere and kind of you know i was just thinking at the time we're probably just never giving up here in theory so just making the call hoping for a brick and we get the brick of the bricks um deuce of diamonds so a board pairing river which is always good to see but it also does mean this is a very very hard one to bluff so i think if you know luckily he checked this one in game but if he did shove in game this is a very uncomfortable spot in theory you know in theory again i think it's just a snap call i don't think we have much better hands here i you know maybe we obviously have some aces kings and stuff like that in our range sometimes but still it's just like an uncomfortable position so if he did rip it in it would have been annoying but we don't have to face that decision this time because he checks and we quickly check this one and yeah we see that in game he had the ace five of spades which is good but yeah, I think this is an okay candidate for him to bluff. But yeah, I don't, I don't mind the check back and just kind of giving up on the river here. It's a, again, really hard one to bluff. And I'd rather honestly bluff with the hearts more than the spades because it kind of unblocks all the spades that I could have. So, you know, I don't mind it. I think um, in theory, I think that hand mixes. But yeah, all good. Another big pot, $6,000 coming our way. Let's keep it going. We are just picking up pots after pot and the hand immediately after we look down at pocket queens in plus two position and milkman three bets us to five hundred dollars it folds around to us and yeah it could be an obviously uh, in theory this is a hand that we're probably going to be forward betting pretty much pure but given how deep we are and just given the dynamic i decided that in in, in terms of the game flow i decided that this uh, was a pretty good call just trap and just go to the streets and again just kind of keeping the wider three bet range and this is some of the exploits that i make sometimes when people are three betting a little bit too widely i would flat with some of my stronger holdings to just kind of keep them all in there instead of four betting and just getting to a very uncomfortable position uh, against stronger holdings. so check um the flop is 10 for deuce milkman bets out 500 dollars. i think this is a spot that i could sometimes just raise here um just kind of representing all the diamonds um as and then you know i got some sets so i think check raising here is okay with the queens but i decided to just check call turn goes check check river is the six so pretty good run out amazing run out so um yeah just thinking about what the sizing is or whether i want to check raise whether i want to go for value i bet in game that half pot was just a good sizing just to get value from some of the ace highs, some of the pairs like nines, jags, etc. But he raises us to $2,500, which is an interesting spot, but it makes sense with the 10, six of spades. And yeah, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we make the snap call. And maybe I do think about this spot sometimes and raise again, but I don't know. Against like very strong value hands, obviously we're dead. So it kind of would be suicide. So we kind of get the max here uh, when he raises us to $2,500 and pick up a $7,000 pot. So literally every three bed pot going our way. This is just kind of what dream sessions are made of. Playing kind of well, running really well. And that's really all it takes to have a really big session like this. All right, we are pretty card dead for about the next hour until the biggest pot 
of the night. There is a hundred dollar straddle, and we look down at the Cowboys pocket kings in plus three. We raise it up to two hundred fifty dollars. Milkman three bets us to seven hundred dollars. Alex in the button four bets to thousand seventeen hundred dollars, and Amir in the straddle now cold five bet rips it in nine thousand two hundred thirty dollars and it folds around to us and we look down at pocket kings honestly if we were let's say just playing normally playing in a pretty regular passive table this is a spot that i genuinely will consider not you know i I think folding here is obviously too nitty but i will consider this is a cold three bet cold four bet cold five bet ship for 10k and kings is not a a snap decision here but in this specific game pretty much the dream spot so i don't really think too much before ripping my stack in don't really want to I don't know, slow roll, don't really want to do anything. I can probably just sell a little bit more and look a little bit weaker and target hands like queens and jacks that are behind me to also make the call. But yeah, we rip it in. And yeah, we're showing the good news, ace king. And for the first time in at least my hands that I played, we agree to run this twice. Gotta hold, gotta hold. First run out is always clean. Yeah, against Ace King, it's always never, you know, it's never over. So always good to win the first one. I would not have been, yeah, it wouldn't have been fun losing that first one. So win the first one, got a hold on the second to pick up a 21K pot. Can we hold? Can we hold the, yeah, the graphics are obviously off. He picks up more outs with the Jack of Spades on the turn. So he picks up some equity here, but the river is a brick. So picking up a 20K pot, just like that, we're up around $20,000 for the entire session. And yeah, what an amazing, amazing spot. We got about an hour left of this session. So just trying to remain focused at the time, just trying to really zone in. And what I really like to do in these spots is really not think about whether I'm up or down which is really think about in terms of big blinds, how much do I have, what's my playability, and just continue to make the right decisions. So, yeah. And, yeah, so we're just going to look to finish out the session strong. All right, the sun run just continues. I don't even remember. I mean, I've lost small pots, medium pots, but literally every big pot coming my way. And we look down at King Jack of Hearts in the small blind. We raise things up to $300. There's a $100 straddle on. There's about 30 minutes left of the session. And Alex now in the straddle three bets us to $1,000. And I think looking back at this and the more studying I've done over time, I think this is actually a great candidate to four bet here with uh, just out of position. And just given how deep we are, I think this is a hand that we definitely want to do that. But here, we just make the call and the flop is okay it's ace jack three two spades so we flop middle pair and we obviously check this over to the pre-flop aggressor and alex now bets seven hundred dollars and we are obviously going to make the call and continue here on the turn is the nine of clubs so it brings up you know it brings in other other uh, the other flush draw here as well And we check it over, obviously no lead in this spot, and we're just going to decide and just figure out what Alex does. And he bets out $1,700. So interesting spot. I think, in theory, I think we just have to obviously always continue here with a jack, especially king jack, uh, unblocking all the spades and all the clubs. But also in theory, I just don't really know how much bluffs he has, especially what his three betting range is. I think it's very ASEX heavy. I think it's very pair heavy. So yeah, it's an interesting spot, but yeah, we're going to obviously against a very, very good, capable high stakes player. We're just not going anywhere in this dynamic. So we make the call and the river is a bink. Again, it's the Jack of diamonds. And I think about what I want to do in this spot. I think when the board pairs like this, I actually do think we do have a lot of leads because I don't think he should have any 
jackx so it's an interesting spot but i also want to get value from all the hands that he has so i actually decide to go for a very small sizing kind of inducing bet um and i think this can work pretty well i think with bluffs as well i don't really want to go super super big just because i yeah i think it just um i kind of want to let him also be able to have bluffs and not just be in a hero call spot which i don't think this is so in a pot of about seven thousand dollars i go pretty small it's thousand five hundred dollars and alex thinks about this for quite a while and unfortunately the stream doesn't capture this in full but he makes a massive raise to eight thousand dollars so really really weird spot but i actually didn't really think about this one too much i'm not really going anywhere i just don't think i can ever fold this spot i think he has ace jack i think he has like aces obviously he has some jack nines but uh, i just i just don't i just don't think i can go anywhere so i make the call and yeah we're showing the good news he has a six off so, so kind of turning his hand into a bluff a little bit or getting hands off the chops which i actually don't mind i think a six is probably a really really good bluffing candidate just because he obviously you know blocks a lot of the ace jacks he you know he has aces so pretty good bluff i think um other hands might be like i don't know nine eight of spades or something ten nine of spades that could turn this into a bluff but again guys everything going our way so another massive pot i think that was also close to a little less than maybe 20k but just never losing three bet pots today which again like it's just run good it's not even me playing that good it's just me hitting every flop and just all the runouts going my way so let's see let's see what we can lock up for this session all right here we go and this is the last hand of the stream hand 126 amir opens things up to 150 dollars in the hijack 50 dollars straddle you guys know the deal and in the small blind we look down at queen 10 of diamonds again not really any flats in this position uh, possibly at some frequency, but I am playing aggressive three betting to $600. I like the sizing can maybe even go larger just because of how deep the game is playing. But Amir is a little short stack. I think he has like 5.4 thousand. Um, so just three betting pretty standard four X $600. We go to the flop. It's a very similar one. It's a 10, seven, three. If you guys remember the tie hand, um, I think it's a very similar one. And I think we do want to just check or, or bet the spot a lot, but I keep doing this thing where i just check so i just check this over um and amir checks this one pretty quickly the turn is the eight of hearts and again i think if i check the flop i think on the turn this is a pretty much a check as well so we check this one now amir bets one thousand five hundred dollars which also for me doesn't make too much sense i think if he had pretty much a good value hand on the flop he would definitely bet a lot of 10x a lot of sets like sevens and threes definitely want to bet i think possibly there are some spades that he might check and then barrel turn here with but other than that maybe eights is probably the only candidate that he might kind of take this line with um and some maybe like ace nine offsuit or some hands like that i think yeah but otherwise it, it really doesn't make sense so i think my 10 here is very very good and i think about what i want to do I, I was thinking about just just check calling this at some frequency but i think again given that we are out of position i just kind of want to put max value and i think we got to have some values when we check twice so i think this is a pretty good one for us to rip it in and on the last hand of the session we rip this in there uh he for the, his remaining stack so i think about a five thousand six thousand dollar raise and now he's in the tank and obviously when he's in the tank i'm pretty much I, I, i'm feeling pretty good i don't think i'm ever beat here i don't think yeah i think again i'm, I'm kind of eliminating all the 10x because i think all the 10x just bets in position when i check it over to him so yeah interesting spot but he thinks about it for a long long time before making the call and shows seven deuce off suit for the call i don't mind it i think i have some bluffs here i think i have all the ace jacks and things like that i have queen jack that probably maybe check turn check flop check turn and just get uh yeah get a little bit 
yeah, interesting on the last hand, but that's what I decided to do. And we again get the full double up for a 12k pot coming our way. And so that concludes a dream, dream session. My biggest winning session of the, yeah, ever, ever in for 5,000 out for about 41k. So a 36k profit score. Amazing amazing spot yeah what a dream spot this was and yeah just looking back obviously looking back on all the hands today it's just you can easily tell that i just ran extremely well in all the big pots i held in all the three bet pots i just hit flops and hold you know so it's you know like poker is a funny thing obviously you need to be playing really really well but the run good and the luck plays a very very big part in the game as you guys know and today you saw basically all of it even in spots where i didn't play correctly or well you know i got bailed out and things just went well so that concludes the session what a dream spot just amazing also stream as well just a great card room so that wraps it up hope you guys enjoyed this one just trying to keep getting better every single day so hope you guys yeah hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you guys think you know do all that like comment subscribe it always helps so let me know what you guys think i will see you guys next time let's go peace <laughs>